the, the many that entered. Neck Twist, of course, being them, and Neck Twist also being the ones getting quite the start here on Inferno. It is going to be a best of three, as always, with these playoffs. In fact, as always, through the whole season, Neck Twist have been um, known to sort of battle it out in some of these games. Magdeburg, that was quite the series. Those two played. Just as an example, in those quarterfinals, but it's Wasp to grind it out here. It is um, Neck Twist's pick, maybe I should add. Um, I'm here with Earl from Wasp. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Oh, thank you for asking. Yeah. I already asked this before, but I'm just going to ask again. <laughs> I didn't know if I should ask you again how you're feeling, but... Well, I'm feeling fine uh, for the second time as well. Slightly tired, I guess, but that's about it. Doing yeah. fine otherwise. But, uh, well, I mean, obviously, um, you guys are headed for the game against uh, Neck Twist. So, any expectations you have for the game? Anything uh, Anything got you scared? Anything got you spooked? Um, We've tried to keep expectations and, like, uh, I guess... Uh, how do you put it? Yeah, well, just expectations and um, overall feeling quite low going into the game. We don't want to put our expectations too high as we've got a stand-in and we made it really far. We've had a good season. A lot of the season has just been keeping it casual, keeping it to what we know and working with the system that we've been running and that has been working really great. Um, the, the main thing is is that we, we can keep our heads high if it does go against us. I think that's something we did great versus Hooligan. And um, I think as long as we keep a good mentality going throughout the game, I think we'll be fine versus them. Yeah, I mean, you guys obviously had a have had a pretty pretty decent record in the semi final, if I'm completely not mistaken. Yeah, I, I believe so. We had a lot of games were not problem except for Fury Academy in the groups uh, where we we used Connor as our, our stand in. Um, uh, as Matt was away, and that was that was a really tough game, and it kind of sobered us up a bit because going into a lot of our games, we'd been doing really, really well, and we won a bit of a high. But finally, after that, we were like, okay, we we need to start getting some things straight. After that, we we had a bit of a lack of practice uh, due to some personal life complications, and we went into our first game of playoffs where Hooligan, a team that we had practiced against a lot.
team that we had practiced against a lot and we, we knew a lot about them. They just completely shocked us out of nowhere. Their, their new fifth, uh, the neon guy, was hitting every up shot. He was making fantastic calls. And that, that again, like kind of shook us up a bit. And I think after that, we started waking up and playing some proper Counter-Strike. And uh, I was really happy when we were able to, to come back from a really bad deficit versus them. Yeah. I mean, it's good just keeping, keeping things close to the ground, not really expecting anything too much out of it. And just don't get hurt if you end up losing. Yeah, I mean, going like we know a lot of them on the hooligan side, and I think a lot of people underestimate them a lot. And the the thing is, you never underestimate anyone. And uh, Counter Strike is such a fifty fifty game. I feel like, and um, if you underestimate your opponents, they they will they will bite you back, and they'll they'll take full advantage of that. And once Connor, you know, he was he was in the coach role, he got into our heads, and he said, you know, we we got to stop underestimating them, and we got to start like actually playing as a team. And I think that's where. We start waking up, and I think from there we've not really made that mistake again of underestimating anyone. And whenever we've been down, we've just kept in our minds that we can bring it back, and that they can easily uh, start underestimating us. And that's what we we have we bank on a lot. Yeah, I mean, hey, that is a really good mindset coming into thing, coming into any games. If I mean, at least from my experience as well, just everyone on the same page. Yeah, I think everyone everyone's on the same page for the most part. Sometimes I, I have to remind Freddy what we're doing at Star Rounds and be like, Oh, what are we doing again? Oh, but <laughs> apart from that, everyone we have a we're a bit more structured than I think a lot of teams. We spend a lot of time making sure that we all have a good feeling about what we're gonna do with each other. And there are obviously variables because you don't wanna like have everything the same thing every round and there are gonna be differences in every round. But we, we know what flashes are being thrown and where they're being thrown, what Molotovs need to be placed and, and what to expect from the other teams. So we, we try and go through uh, these things uh, day after day and try and make sure that they're as smooth as possible. Um, You've got a good thing going on and some things you can obviously work on. I think you guys know that as well. You guys are working on them. And I mean, from that, it's just all uphill. Yeah. Yeah. Some, I think that the best part is we, we've been together for a while, me, Freddie uh, and Fess. Um, before Connor went to coach, him and I with Freddie had been together for a very long time. I think it's coming up to like two years at this point. And we're just like, we, we know each other. We know each other's play styles and we know what we're all capable of. And I think that's also something that's, uh, great for all of us. We we know what to expect when it comes to each other. We, we just need to uh, try our best to to know what to expect from uh, our opponent. I was going to ask, like, how long have you guys been together? Since I know you, I've seen you around a few a uh, few of the tournaments, and well, with a similar roster, but maybe mm -hmm. one or two changes. So, nearly two years. Is <laughs> a that's a long time. Yeah, with, with Freddie, I think I've been with Freddie for two, three years now. Him and I have been teammates for a while. I've come in and out of teams and then sort of came back. Um, with with Fez, we had him for a bit, um, a year or so ago, and um, things didn't really click with him in the team and people weren't happy. So we, we let him go. But um, two seasons ago, I'd say, I was thinking about maybe uh, quitting as I had gone to another team for like half a season. And Connor dragged me back in with Freddie and we bring, brought in Fez and everything felt really good in that team. Everyone seemed like they were on the same page. Personalities weren't clashing at all. And it was it was really um, enjoyable to be there. And it was really also enjoyable to see how Fetis had changed since I'd actually last been his teammate. And I, he really shocked me when uh, he came back in. I thought he was a fantastic player. And I also think his attitude was also fantastic. So yeah, me and Freddie been together for like three years. Connor was coming up, I think was about two until he sat down to coach. But I guess he's still technically one of my teammates now. So uh yeah we we us three have really good chemistry um but unfortunately i think when you get used to people arguments start peering up over little things um but we we always need we always manage to solve those arguments and, and turn it into criticism for for what we have to improve on well i mean hey you guys uh you guys have been together for quite a while i think you guys uh got a good synergy going on uh yeah i think we've got really good synergy i think mm, like in some moments, the comms are a bit hectic. Like I think sometimes Freddie, his communication can be a bit hard to get through, but his his aim and actual understanding of the game, even if he doesn't let onto it, is is fantastic. And when you can really get through to him, and when he's on his day, communication and everything about him is is like he's one of the best in the team. Uh, Fez just is one hundred percent dedicated to the game, and you know that he cares and he has a lot of passion about winning and and trying to improve as a player. Um, and 
you know his communication his understanding he is like the ideal player you want he, he the only thing i would say is like when he gets a bit nervous he starts shaking with his aim and you, you feel like that lets him down a bit but apart from that he's a, a brilliant player and we've recently just brought in dreamy who's been a friend of mine for a while and he's instantly clicked with everyone in the team like everyone loves him everyone thinks he's a funny lovely guy and everyone's like really happy with him and i have previous chemistry with him so i'm really happy with him Overall, like the adjustments we made with the new roster has been, uh, it, was, it was a lot faster than I thought it was going to be. I thought it would take a lot of time, but it felt like instantly when we brought in Dreamy, people were clicking. And in fact, the communication almost got better. It felt like it calmed down a bit. Dreamy sort of keeps everyone's nerves uh, down and he keeps everyone really happy and everyone just, it just vibes with him fantastically on the team. Uh, yeah. Uh, how do you usually prepare for these games? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, well, more importantly, this one against, uh, well, next twist here. Um, so in the, in these games, it's about not overcomplicating it. If if we start like going hard anti strat, hard uh, changes in the team, everyone's going to be confused going into the match because we we won't have a lot of days to prepare for that. We just say let's play our own game, and we we just be on the lookout for what they're doing. So if we notice like a pattern that they're doing, Connor will immediately bring it up to me. He he's may not be the tactician, but he he picks up on these things really well and he'll try and we'll talk over a solution. But going into the game, it's all about laughs and smiles for me. I don't I don't want people going into it too seriously. I want them to take it like it's a scrim. The scrim should be like officials, officials should be like a scrim. We all laugh and have fun when we're doing scrims. We should be doing the same going into officials. So we try and play uh, little mini games like while we wait for the game to start up like things like scribble and and, and all that if if we can obviously obviously sometimes people get in late so they have to uh, go on the dm and they want to get their aim ready but a lot of it is just remember to play our own game not to underestimate them and to to be happy you, you're gonna play it your best if you're happy yeah i mean i was uh, gonna ask something else about it how do you guys uh, bond as a team but i mean scribble scribble io that's just basically it you just get mad at each other <laughs> yeah i mean well for eddie he uh obviously he's swedish so he sometimes doesn't get all the words um and his drawings are just absolutely abysmal so a lot of it's just laughing about that but um in in our off time i think a while back we used to play pugs together but i think a lot of our time now for cs is dedicated towards practice so that's a lot of our bonding fetis um puts in a lot of time to demos and and improving so uh, he likes to be in his own world, I feel like, but he, he also enjoys the company outside of the game. Um, but right now, we usually just find a game to play, whether it's Counter-Strike or it's something else, and we play that together. Right now, we're playing like Among Us every day. Um, a after practice, everyone just gets into the Among Us channel. We will just play that all night. Um, and Freddy, when apparently it's not too hot. That's some really good... Or that's, a, that's a decent way to just get along with their teammates, make sure you just get angry on <laughs> them, everything like that, but... Yeah. From everything I've heard, you guys get along with each other uh, really well. So um, to bring in a bit of chaos into this world, uh, who's the um, who's the most chaotic one in your team that causes anything? Uh... Freddy, Freddy, definitely. <laughs> it's, it's not a competition. It's Freddy. So uh, Freddy, if you met him, you'd understand immediately. But <laughs> yeah, Freddy, at the start of every single round, Freddy's always going, "Oh, what are we doing?" Even if I've explained it perfectly, and he's already said that he understands. Uh, he says things that just uh, I I don't even know how to comprehend and uh, and uh, you know sometimes it would be like you know, when we used to try and find nuke scrims uh, back in the day when no one was looking for nuke. I remember it took me like thirty minutes to finally find one. I finally got one, and Freddie jumped into a Fortnite game and refused to leave. And we were all shouting at him, "Leave the Fortnite game, Freddie!" It took me thirty minutes to get this game. And uh, at the time, we had another Swedish player, Arlene, in the team. And Arlene, we always know when Arlene was mad at Freddie because he would start shouting Swedish, and you could Arlene went ballistic on him, and Freddie just went, "Okay, I'm joining," and just, like really quiet for the rest of the game. But yeah, Freddie definitely causes the question is, do they have a ta do they have a chance? everyone has a chance it's, uh, it's never a question they always have a chance we go in every game to win that's the the number one goal but we don't write off the the chance of them winning just because we want it so badly um in, in fact we want it so badly we need to understand that they they'll want it just as badly as us so it, we don't we don't underestimate them and but we we know that for those reasons, we're bringing our best game possible going into it. If we underestimated them, we wouldn't bring our best game for sure. We we just run around the map and, and do what we want. But because we don't set those sort of expectations, we're going to bring our absolute end game for this one.
Yeah, so you're saying there's something hold with holding W and playing uh, buying P90s. Yeah, I, I think if we get to 15 0 or something, I might let that happen. But I, I've lost some bad leads in the past before, so I'm not sure if even I'd, I'd just say, guys, could we just close out 16 0 or something? Uh, the only, no the only time. Yeah. So close it out as soon as possible. I hope, uh, I hope we win. And I hope that finally this time we're, we're going to get right this season with the, with this team. I really hope. So, yeah, that's what we've got to say. I mean, hey, well, uh, good luck to you in the game, Milo. Thank you. I think I might catch you after the, afterwards. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. But hey, either way, until then, uh, good luck. Hope you guys Thank win you. the game. I'll be watching. Buy a P90, please. I, I, I'll do if we win pistol. I'll buy a P90. Oh fuck yeah! Let's go. Okay. Uh, other than that, it's been a pleasure for the past. You too, well, thank you. It's, it's been. Next was didn't worry about him, but really should have. What a crucial way to finish around. Crucial part of it wasn't the way he finished it, but he did finish it in a pretty entertaining way regardless you'd have to say Fifteen eight. now the score in this just just look like a score line next was won't be able to come back from do try and go outside in towards a now but the double kill for cw traded out eventually but Though they aren't in towards the site with all Wasp players being there instead, and that's the game for you. Wasps gaming 16 8 on this second map. Not too different from, uh, from the first map, in a way. The very deserved victors here. Here for the post match interview with uh, Earl and Dreamy this month. Did not forget your name. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, let's just recap. How are you guys doing? Good. Do a victory. Doing good. Yeah. Guy. Lots of fun in the comms. It was a good match. Oh wow! It's completely new information. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but hey, um, overall, I mean, you guys, or you did mention you guys had some laps in the comms. All good. No problems. P90. That's a problem. Didn't have P90 it. Was a problem. Yeah. I, I think Dreamy should have bought one because I feel like his role suits that very well. His play style. Just put a gun in my hand, I can use it, trust me. Exactly. Dual Berettas. Any... TV Bison. Bison? I've actually owned one, to be fair. So, and you got to it in. Not as good as Konzi, though. Konzi uh, apparently is the dedicated PV Bison and uh, yeah, Deagle and PV Bison hybrid player. I mean, lucky that's why he's in coach now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, um, I mean, hey, first map, Inferno, you guys started on... Uh... It was a CT side? Yeah, it was CT. After this, I might possibly pass to uh, the final. At least the um, third place game. If, if, if that's even going to be streamed, who knows. It's been an interesting ride, you'd have to say. Ruling an eSport in those round of 16s was certainly a highlight. Matt and chat. Always the self deprecation, eh? But it is, you'd have to say, sort of uh, notable whenever Wasps do make a change. It's the thing that always gets brought up when they play, but they, they are known for sort of sticking together as a core way more than, than uh, what is typical of this level of team. Especially when uh, the vast majority of them are based in, in the UK. So now that they have made a change, you know, you do have to raise some eyebrows. Meanwhile, Bethis, long standing member, of course, gets flashed in here. It's. Very mixed bag from that part. CW is gonna step up though, or try to at least with one frag. That that damage that he's done to Kabul though, 
And the damage that was already there on Dustin should mean that this is quite the uphill battle for Neck Twisters. They do get the bomb down, but you'd have to fear that they're not going to get much further. Dustin do take, does take out another one, but only free health. He's a tickle away from death, and it's not a tickle. It's a headshot with an MP9, but... You guys had a real good start there on uh, Inferno. It was like, what, 7 to 9 to something like that? Yeah, we, we were doing really well. Um, I think, like, the everywhere was just unlock a lot of the times. Like, we were winning all our individual fights, and I think we, we had a good feel on the situation nearly every round, because I think we were getting very good info early. Um, there was just towards the end of that CT... I think we ever extended quite a lot, including myself. Like, I remember one round I went for a kill in a 5 3 when I really didn't need to. I just had to play back and we ended up losing that round. So there was a little bit of over ambition. The more organized side at the moment. But I'll change. Of course. Equus do seem like they have a couple good CT players in them in a way. We're going to have to see a couple more players sort of stand out. In a, in a more consistent way, they are to, to really convince further on I mean, this half, and they do need to convince a bit further. They can't just be on two rounds after this half stunt, peace side or not. Not the way to start it, anyway. Not the way to continue it either. Drop into a four on two against them right now. Dustin and Slow, last one's in, and seems like. Last one's out. 8 2, and again, most just look pretty tidy right now. There, there's nothing you can really complain about in terms of the way they're. No nuke and whatever, but who, uh, who picked which map? That's something they, I'm curious about. They picked Inferno, we picked Nuke. Yeah. Huh. Mirage would have been Decider. Alright, alright. I mean, you guys had a real good uh, start on Nuke as well. It was an 8 7 half on the T side, if we just go over to the second game as well now. I yeah. think, uh,. What you call it with nuke? I think because we had a stand in that was uh cipher. Um, yeah, on T, it was quite like obviously trying to get him to do what we wanted him to do, but then we one. then we got into a groove after a couple of rounds and then we were hitting our shots and started snowballing from there, to be honest. Yeah, are you guys usually confident with nuke? Yeah, I yeah, think probably it's our best, best map. Yeah, yeah like every, everyone feels comfortable in the role, everyone knows what they're doing. like. Um, and one of the things that I find with our nuke right now is like if, if even if the team coordination is a little bit off and maybe some nades are missing, like Dreamy, I don't know what it is. Like his aim is fantastic on that map. Like, like if if we're in doubt, I think I just have to call Dreamy go kill from now. Great first frag from Earl though. The second half, Wasps, they have been pretty good at the pistol rounds, with the exception of of this first round in this this um in this map. And they did get battered, but seems to be coming back to the winning ways. This neck was do we get a bomb plant? Should mean <laughs> considering the in my opinion pretty pretty stupid current economic situations that uh, Equus aren't even going to be that mad about it. They'll probably have the better economy. Um, but okay, on Inferno, that T side as well, you just locked it out, was it 16-7? Uh, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Something along those lines. Close yeah. enough. Well, I mean, hey, you guys really close it out. You guys didn't seem to have a problem there. T side as well, you guys are good on that. Anything uh, like uh, really stand out about them or what you guys did really well? Freddy was talking about like the the play that Open made one round. Um, apparently, he like ran down apps through Molotov behind himself and then ran back and, and smoked it. But that was yeah. the thing is like they they didn't give up for sure. Like they were they were willing to peak everything and they they didn't lose confidence in themselves even when they were losing. Um, we we could definitely there was one round where I made a play and I could tell they've watched our demo because the what the Open did when I made a certain play uh, was definitely. Like, no, no Ulpa would do that unless he knew exactly what I was trying to plan. So, um, that sort of, like, put us back in our tracks. We went, okay, this, we're now going to readjust a bit to what uh, we're going to do because they, they know what we're on. But I think I think the main thing to, to look at in Inferno was we were solid on CT, which has been our main problem on that map. But our T side remained to be good, which 
we we also had a good tea time on Fun and Varsity has always been abysmal, so it was positive. Right, uh, well, and speaking about well, what you just said, uh, what do you think is your next step in just becoming a bit better as a team, just gelling more, Ex just experience playing together, going more in depth with strats, whatever, whatever it could be. I think for me, it has to be for, for well, two things for me. I have to improve as an in-game leader. I, I've in the past, I've been pretty hesitant, and I've I've said I'm a good in-game leader and, and and things like this. But I, I've seen that there's cracks in in the calls and the plays that I I decide on. So that's one thing I'd like to to see change is if I can progress further. But I think the main main other thing is like our chemistry and mid-round decision making to, together as a team, not just my calls. That needs to be better. Like we are sometimes a bit. We're kind of like trying to call. One, one of us wants a loud voice, and sometimes we're overcalling each other when we don't need to. So those moments, the chemistry almost needs to like die down, and people need to just shut up for a second and just let someone else talk. But that's our next step to to bed in the new fifth and to to master our communication because I think we have all the right pieces now to to make it and, and make it work this time. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I think as well, expanding our map a little bit more. Because we only have sure. a certain amount of maps down, so I mean today could have gone on either way. Luckily, mm -hmm. they played the same maps as we do, so it went perfectly as we wanted. But if it went to like a like a trainer a bit ago, we would have struggled a bit more. To, to be fair, one of our issues with our map pool has been like the lack of practice, and now we're losing a fifth player. It's been we we're struggling to expand a map pool. We would have, ideally speaking, we would have been on our fifth or sixth map at this point if we didn't lose our fifth and we had a bit more time to practice. Yeah, uh, what actually did happen with your fifth? Was it like, was it Konzi who was the fifth? Uh, it was Matt MV. So, oh, Connor, oh, yeah. Connor left, a, yeah, Dreamy was uh, Connor's replacement, or Konzi. Um, Matt, Matt had been demotivated for a, a really long time, I'd say, like, probably since before last season. Probably midway through, like, two seasons ago, he told me he didn't want to keep playing. Um... And you know he kept we kept saying it's okay but, you know we can get your replacement it's okay we we understand but he kept like sort of pushing himself because he wanted to try and make it work and I think towards the, the start of this season I think he realized like he didn't want to play and he realized that if he was forcing himself it would just hold him for him himself and us back so he said he'd step down and if we needed him to play he'd play but we should probably try and look to the future instead of trying to stay in the past with him and I think. That was a, a good decision by him for for both parties, but um, yeah, it, it was really sad to lose him because he was a fantastic player and a fantastic teammate. How are you guys feeling in the grand finals? You guys uh, think you're gonna keep on the run? You guys gonna I win? I mean, it? yeah, I'm I'm kind of confident for the final to be honest. I think uh, the final will be a, definitely a tough game because I believe we'll be playing Fury Academy. We played them in groups, and obviously they groups is the best of three. They played really well. I think we were totally caught off guard, and that's when I only just recently joined the team as well. Yeah, we so, had Connor. Uh, yeah, playing. so we had a stand-in as well in that game. But hopefully, by the final, we'll, st we'll still have Cypher as well in the final standing in. So, um, they are very talented players, so it is going to be a really tough game, and hopefully it'll be a really good game to watch as well. But we are going to be coming guns blazing, let's say. So, literally swinging. Catch me swinging these hands all over the shop. Whoa. We, I, I don't think we can back down in, in, in confidence. That's them. Like, they're one of those teams that will just try and run you over for brute force. So we've we got to keep pushing against them. We can't let them just run around the map doing whatever they want. So I mean, you're they, saying they're... they like to hold W. So is this a time just by P90 and hold W even further? I'm, I'm actually debating it. Like, I'm genuinely thinking that might actually be... The... One, one of the things me and Connor were talking about when we were in a scrim... And uh, I said to Connor, one of the things is when, when people are taking mid constantly on overpass, which is a, a different example because I, I don't think they play overpass, um, one of the best things to do is just get in their faces and don't let them take mid. So we might have to counter aggression and aggression. And if a P90 is literally the, the best weapon of choice for that moment, I'm, I'm actually going to have to use it, I think. All right. Uh, I mean, hey, besides that, I don't think I've got anything else unless you guys have any final closing words. I want to put on record that Jimmy has to give gloves to Cypher. <laughs> for a week, for a week, that is it. Okay. Week. Uh, no, just be prepared. Uh, hopefully we'll be coming out swinging and we're going to win the final. Alright, well, hey, uh, thank you so much for uh, sitting down with me for the second time here. Earl, uh, Dreamy, thank you for joining.